Okay, in this problem, we're asked to find x of t in the form a times e to the negative alpha t times cosine of the quantity mu t minus phi. And we want to identify the pseudo frequency, which is mu in this equation. And then we would uh, like to find the circular frequency if there's no damping force, or c is equal to zero. Okay, so we're given that the mass of our system is equal to 1, our damping force C is equal to 2, our spring constant K is equal to 2. The, there are two initial conditions, X, of, X sub 0, the initial position is equal to 1, and V sub 0, the initial velocity is equal to 0. So quickly we can interpret what X sub 0 and V sub 0 mean. This is simply that the position at time zero is one. And the first derivative of our position at zero is equal to zero. That's our velocity at zero. Okay, so we're gonna wanna create our spring mass system and we can do so in the following way. We have our mass one times the second derivative plus our damping force times the first derivative plus our spring constant two times the, the function x of t. And that all equals zero. So we want to find x of t, we can find our characteristic equation. We get r squared plus 2r plus 2 equals 0. We can use the quadratic formula. And we get r is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the quantity 1 minus 2. We can pull this 4 out of the square root and then divide both terms by 2. And then inside the square root, after we pull out the 4, we have a negative 1, so that's just i. And we get r is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i. So we know then that we have two complex solutions and our general solution is going to be e to our real root negative t times c1 times cosine of our imaginary part t plus c2 sine of t. So we have our general solution here. We have two initial conditions, and, and we have two unknown variables, c1 and c2. We can solve for c1 and c2 by using our initial conditions. We'll plug in for the position at zero. So the position at 0 is equal to 1, which is equal to e to the 0 times c1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So we just get c1. And e to the 0 is 1. So we get that c1 is equal to 1. Now we're going to take the Write this up here. Or rather, I can just fill in the one here. And we're going to take our first derivative so that we can use our second initial condition.
and we'll get negative e to the negative t times the quantity cosine t plus c2 sine of t. And we get, and then we add uh, e to the negative t times the quantity negative sine of t plus c2 cosine of t. And we're going to plug in when t is equal to zero. So this first term is e to the zero. Cosine of zero is one. Sine of zero is zero, so this term e to the negative t is now e to the zero. Sine of t, sine of zero is zero, so this term is also zero. And cosine of zero is one, so we get just c2 from this second term. So we get plus So we have negative e to the zero, which is negative one. Times one is negative one, plus e to the zero is one, times c2. So we have negative one plus c2, and that's equal to zero, looking at our initial condition. So we have negative one plus c2 is equal to zero, c2 is equal to one. So we know that c1 and c2 are both equal to one. And now we're going to go ahead and try and get it in the form a times e to the negative alpha t cosine mu of t minus phi. And so first I'll start by just writing our solution is e to the negative t times the quantity cosine of t plus sine of t and we want to get it into this form So we'll use that C1 needs to be equal to our amplitude A times cosine B. And C2 needs to be equal to A times sine of phi. And so we know that C1 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to 1, so we can square both of these two terms and add them together, so we get a squared times cosine squared of phi plus sine squared of phi is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 2. Cosine squared of phi plus sine squared of phi is our identity 1, so we just get a squared is equal to 2, or a is equal to the square root of 2. So we know that a is equal to the square root of 2. Now we can solve for phi. So we'll, we'll write it as c1 
over C1 is equal to A A sine of t over A cosine of t. A is cancel, we get C1 or C2 over C1 is 1 is equal to the tangent of phi. Now we know that this is equal to pi over 4 because we know that we want our angle to be in the first quadrant since our amplitude is positive for both of these and we want our result to be positive for both of these. So cosine and sine are both positive, which means that we're in the first quadrant or first quadrant. So we know that phi is equal to pi over 4. So now we can plug in phi and alpha, or phi and a, into our equation. And we get that x of t is equal to the square root of 2 times e to the negative t times cosine of the quantity t minus pi over 4. So we want to define the pseudo frequency, which is our constant times t. So that's just 1. So So that's that answer. And now we want to find what the circular frequency would be if we had no damping force. So let's figure out how to do that. So as you'll recall, this was our original spring mass system, and we had a damping force of 2. So we want to find out what the system, or what the circular frequency would be if there was no damping force. So we'll set this 2 equal to a 0, and we get x double prime plus 2x equals 0. And we can use our characteristic equation again. r squared plus 2 equals 0. Solve for r. And we see that r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2i. And now we're going to write our general solution. Since we have two complex roots, we know that it's going to be of the form e to the real part of our solution, which is 0, t. So this is just 1, so we can ignore. So we can write that as just 1. And that's going to be times c1 cosine, our imaginary part. And we get our general solution is x of t is equal to c1 cosine of square root 2t plus c2 sine of square root t. And we can read our circular frequency off right here. We don't even need to solve for our c1 and c2. We see that circular frequency 
is just the square root of 2. So the circular frequency with no damping force is the square root of 2. 